January 2011, mass protests in Tunisia forced President Ben Ali to flee the country, ending 24 years of dictatorship. In February, Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak is toppled after 30 years in power. But in Syria, the people are mostly silent, cowed by over 40 years of brutal dictatorship. In March, a small act of defiance. A group of school children write slogans against the regime. They are imprisoned and tortured. In Damascus, Rami Jara is watching. We'd never imagined that something like Egypt or like Tunisia or Libya would ever happen. His parents had fled Syria before his birth. He's grown up in Europe and in 2004 had traveled to Syria for the first time to visit family. He's arrested at the airport, accused of being a foreign agent and banned from leaving the country for three years. He lands a well-paying job at an import-export company. He gets married. Now he hears something might happen at the Umayyad Mosque after Friday prayers. It will change his life. Prayers end. Everyone is aware of the secret police in their midst. But then... An old man suddenly stood up and he said, my children are, are in prison and I, want, and I want freedom for them. Suddenly, everyone in the mosque starts chanting freedom. The wall of silence has been broken. Gerard joins a local committee for change. He studied journalism abroad and starts recording, documenting. A week later, a second call to the mosque. This time I was sure that something was gonna happen. People had been killed, the regime had already begun its, its, its mass crackdown. He starts filming. We'd realized that the media needed this, this material and we'd realized that there was no one else to film him. He's among hundreds arrested. There were people being dragged across the floor, streaks of blood everywhere. In the chaos, Girard slips his camera to a friend. Being arrested as a journalist could mean death. We were taken into a security branch. I was beaten with batons. I'd also been subject to torture at that time. He is held for three days. It was more so the psychological torture of them telling me that my wife, that she was uh, being subject to rape, which wasn't true, but it was just the fact that they made me believe that that was happening that just drove me crazy. He's released after being forced to sign papers saying he's a terrorist sent to Syria to cause disruption. Jarrah is part of a massive uprising now sweeping Syria. Tens of thousands take to the streets. The military responds with brute force. When his boss demands he attend a pro-government rally, he refuses and quits his job. A citizen journalist is born. To Syria now. The international media have been banned from Syria. Jarrah starts getting the story out by phone. Minutes before going live on air, he realizes the danger of using his real name. He's been surfing MSN and sees a story about a musician named Alexander Page. He goes by the alias Alexander Page. Alexander Page. Alexander Page. Syria today stepped up its campaign to kill anyone who speaks up against the Assad dictatorship. Spring turns to summer. What started as peaceful protest is now all-out civil war. Syrian tanks and snipers mow down thousands of men, women and children. Jarrah reports on it all. Why is it important for you to risk your life to, to, to demonstrate and also to talk to us? Well, it's, it's been 41 years that Syria has, has witnessed this, this fascist re regime that just treats people like dirt. In October, his cover is blown. He's about to be arrested as a spy. I suddenly got a call at around 3 a.m. And it was uh, a friend of mine, and he, he said, you have to leave the country. He said that the name Alexander Page had been associated with my real name, and that they'd found out that it was me who was talking to the media. 
Within the hour, Jarrah, his wife and child are on the run. They make it across the border into Jordan and from there to Egypt. Here he co-founds ANA, New Media Association, to coordinate and strengthen the work of citizen journalists on the ground in Syria and to bridge them with Western media. We're now on the way to the Syrian border. Despite the danger, he smuggled back into liberated areas of Syria by the Free Syrian Army whenever he can. These people have no one to defend them, no one to help them with this transitional period, so I'm definitely worried, I'm actually terrified, because everything else says that Syria is going into a very grim and dark future. Rami Jarrah, winner of the CJFE 2012 International Press Freedom Award.